Hello and welcome to the Thought Loop Podcast with your host, The Trip Keeper, from Tales from the Trip. This is now the second episode of this podcast, and I'm really, really happy about all the good, good reception I got from the first one. So I guess we'll continue this thing. I have nothing better to do. Well, I have other better stuff to do, but this is fun, so I like doing it, because I like to talk into a mic and ramble on for fucking however long it's going to be. So this this episode, like I said, it's number two. Not not going to the bathroom like that. That You might have to do that if I play the brown note right now. Should I play it? You want me to play it? Maybe I'll make you go number two. I'm going to look for it right now. Do you think I could do it? Do you, you guys want to poop right now? I bet you I can do it. Oh yeah, look at this brown note. Let's see. I'm doing this right on the spot. I wonder if it'll if it'll come up. Oh god, what if I have to shit? That would be bad. Let's see here. Hopefully, hopefully uh, brown note's not copyright. Oh god, there's an ad. Fuck you. I hate ads. I know that they're on my videos, but you know, you, a dude's got to make money somehow, right? Hopefully, this is uh this is it. Dude, these ads are getting worse and worse, though. You know? Let's see here. Oh, God. Dude, I actually... Oh, my God. I actually have to go now. Oh, no, it went away. Do you guys have to shit yet? Oh, yeah. I really hope this isn't copyrighted, like, uh, Happy Birthday or anything. This doesn't belong to anybody, does it? It's not by, like, Beethoven or somebody. Oh. oh, dude, I just shit my pants. All right, let's stop that shit. <laughs> oh, my God. See, we're only two minutes in, and I'm already doing this kind of shit. What am I getting myself into here? Wow. This is the Thought Loop Podcast, I'm telling you. Won't, you're not going to get any other podcast on the market that does shit like this. Literally. No, but... To get started, I guess, I wanted to talk about movies. And the one movie in particular I wanted to talk about first was The Northman. The Northman. I recently saw it in theaters on Monday, I think it was. Monday or Tuesday, one of those days. And I went to a theater uh, nearby. It was it's sort of nearby. It's, it's close, close to where I live. Closer. Not as close as the closest movie theater, but it's pretty close. And uh, I used to go there all the time. They had a they had a pinball machine place, like a pinball game game arcade where you can play pinball and drink, and that's always fun. And then there's a donut shop across the street, and that oh man, their donuts are great. They're like three bucks, but they're huge and they're heavy, so it's a great. Oh my god, <clears throat> gotta gotta clear my throat. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a great area. If you you can see a movie, get a donut, play pinball. Not in any particular order. You can bring the pinball machines into the movie theater and then drink and then shove a donut in your ass. That's what I do at least. I don't know. I don't know if I recommend anyone else doing that, but just for me, I like doing that. Pe- people think I'm weird for doing it, but once you get used to it, it's like the best thing ever, you know. <laughs> what has this become? Anyway, The Northman, I recommend this movie. It is it was incredible. If you guys are familiar with Robert Eggers, he created The Lighthouse and The Vivitch, The Witch. Two, I mean, what kind of what kind of words can you describe those movies? Outstanding, polarizing. This this movie, The Northman, was basically a mix of those kind of, but brutal. Like those movies are very tame. Like The Witch I remember when I saw The Witch in theaters, I was, when did it come out? 2015, I was probably, I think it was 15 or 16 at that time when it came out. And I honestly didn't like it at first because, you know, I'm a young, young adolescent brain, you know, what what, what kind of, what kind of art house film shit is this? I don't, I don't fucking like this. I, I was so excited for it. I was, I was like, man, this is going to be the best horror movie of all time. But I ended up not liking it. And there's actually a guy in the movie theater who, who got up after the movie in the front row. He's like, Man, that movie sucked. And I just started laughing because I agreed with him. But I gave it a second watch 
in 2020, so about five years later. I think it came out in 2015. I'm not sure. Let me go look really quick to make sure. I don't want to get fact-checked in the comments. Um, let's see. When did it come out? 2015, so I was right. Oh, it had a box office of $40 million. I wonder what the budget was. Yeah, so I saw that. $4 million? Wow. So it made $36 million. That's crazy. So forty million on a four, forty million on a four million dollar budget. It received critical acclaim and was a box office box office. What the fuck? Wow, dude, it's getting late. I can't read. Box office success. Excuse me. Yeah, I didn't like the movie first, and then I watched it in twenty twenty. So five years later, and it was. Oh, Man, my my opinion definitely changed. Uh, I I grew to love it. Like I I need to watch it again. I think I have the movie on DVD. I watched it on Netflix or something when I had it. But man, if you have never seen The Witch, go watch it. But if you're not into like, man, it's tough because it's like a kombucha. I love kombuchas. A lot of other people like kombucha. But if you don't like it, you really don't like it. So you might be one of those people who are like, eh, a, a, a historical piece, horror? I don't have time for that. Well, if you have the time for it, it the it, the payoff is great. So I saw that in theaters 2015. And I was like, all right, whatever, you know. I mean, my, my impression was it wasn't bad, you know. It, it definitely, it was disappointing in the first time. But it wasn't bad, you know. I just, I was just kind of sad because it, it, I was expecting like something more fast-paced and you know, modern and not modern. I don't know what word I'm looking for. I, it, it's a podcast, whatever. It, it just wasn't what I was looking for. And then the Lighthouse comes out in 2019. I have this movie on DVD, and that's a fact. That movie I saw in theaters, it, man, another movie where you're just like, whoa. And that after seeing that, I'm like, okay, maybe this guy has some talent. You know, Robert Eggers, him and uh, Ari Aster and A24, that's where their, that's where their career started off. And I'm glad they, they gave him money for that. And I, th if I had to choose between The Witch or The Lighthouse, I'd probably go with The Witch just because it's more of more straight horror lighthouse is kind of a psychological i wouldn't say it's a thriller but it it's something the way it's shot and everything is just it's really nice it, it, it transports you into a new dimension you know when you're watching it now this movie the northman fresh in my fucking mind man was that movie brutal oh my god if you have not seen it yet i recommend seeing it it is this director is something else. He actually had a budget this time. But the problem was, I gotta look this up. He, they didn't make a lot of money back. And that's, that's not good. Because a person who is actually good at making movies is getting, he finally got the budget he wanted. Budget, well, he probably, you know, is, is something he wanted, but he didn't really need it. But gladly he'll take it, you know? And I'm glad they gave it to him. But they didn't make a lot of money back. And that's really sad. So they had, okay, this says they had a budget of 70 to $90 million. And you could tell by the production that it looked like it's a $90 million project because it's just so well done. So in the box office, they made, what is this? 29 million so they lost damn near what like 60 million dollars 60 40 to 60 million since they had a budget of 70 to 90 million that's 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 bullshit dude really i mean you're at least you're getting money back it could have it could have been worse than that and I don't know if that has to do with anything with COVID still. People don't like going to the movies. But, you know, I've been seeing movies like Spider-Man. I mean, you know that movie's going to make a lot of money, which it was okay, too. I like Spider-Man. It was enjoyable, but I was also drunk. So um, this movie, this movie deserves a lot more money. And, 
man, I, I kind of hope that this doesn't stop them from paying him to do more. Because I also heard he he's going to do Nosferatu. And him doing Nosferatu, you know I'll be the first one buying tickets for that. That that would be amazing. You, you've you seen him. In every, in every single movie Robert Eggers has done, the dialogue he has written, like the style of it, is just, he knows, he knows what he's doing. And that's what I respect about him. He's probably... He's probably my favorite director right now, next to Ari Aster. And still, you know, Mars Scorsese says he's still making movies, so he's still up there because, you know, he you can't it's hard to beat him. But in the modern times right now, he's number one for sure. He's had three movies where I've seen in theaters like pretty close to opening day. If if not it was if not opening day, it was close to it. I saw it on a bargain Monday and it was one of my only days off, so I had to see it. I I wanted to see it. Me and my friends saw it, and I'm glad we did. It was, it was, it was amazing. This movie was great. Go see it. Help this movie out. It needs to make more money. Get it at least up to fifty million. It, it probably won't since it's only at thirty right now. But man, if you guys can just go there, I'm sure it's getting a lot of good reviews. Like, let's see these reviews for it. Maybe I should write a review for it. Well, you can hear you hear my review in this freaking podcast right now. I don't really go check on Rotten Tomatoes anymore because I've lost trust in that website. It's it's a bunch of lies. What? Dude, if you look up the Northman reviews on Google, it literally has a 2.7 out of 5. Who the fuck is reviewing these movies? It's probably some people, some non-intellectuals who don't know what good movies are. Dude. What is this? I, someone, here, someone said this. I really don't understand these one-star reviews. Reading them, reading them, they clearly don't understand what a well-made film is. That's what I just said. This film, cinematography, acting, tone, fighting, literally everything you could think of is absolutely spectacular. This film, this film from the get-go had me fully immersed and quite literally blown away. If you are a fan of cinematography, this film sets a high bar and does not disappoint. This film is highly, culture, highly culturally accurate despite what other people are saying. The, the director made, it, made sure to do research along with having the cast do research on Nordic cultures. And it very much translates. This movie is amazing and I'm so surprised people went in and came out of it with hate for the film. But this film gets a five star for me and is one of the best films this year and one of my favorites of all time now. Wow. I definitely agree with that. Let's go to the one star reviews. Oh god, these are kind of long. I don't know if I'm going to read them, but... Jesus. I liked this movie better when it was called The Lion King. I was able to get past some of the pretentious, overwrought beginning, which took itself more seriously than I did. However, when the Norsemen were doing a Viking line dance around the fire, along, along with their grunting, I found myself humming the Oompa Loompa song in rhythm. I knew we were in trouble. There was probably about an hour of the plot that was good. There were some genuinely nice moments, some nice scenery, but the acting... I think Bjork was just playing herself. Honestly, I didn't even know Bjork was in the film, so she, I, she must have did a good job. I remember them saying it now, but I don't remember going in that movie. I'm like, I forgot that she was in it. Um, the main character wasn't even that likable. He's not supposed to be likable. He's going for revenge. Well, he is supposed to be likable. I liked him. I, I was rooting for him the whole fucking movie. He was going for re revenge, and, oh, man, what a... I don't know. I think this guy's review is not like a one star. This is more like a three star review. He's like talking good about it and just had some problems with it. Man, these are disappointing to me, honestly. I absolutely could not wait for this movie. I'm a huge Vikings fan. I love the Nordic history and I also enjoyed Alex I also enjoy Alexander S Alexander Skarsgård, excuse me. Felt the first 40 minutes completely unnecessary. Just get to the story already. Um all right, that's gonna spoil it. Don't want to do that. It literally was one of the worst films I've seen in a while. Overreaching with the gore and blood. Overreaching with the gore and blood, dude. That made the fucking movie amazing, man. It, and it wasn't even overused. I'd say it was probably about the same as the Revenant. If you guys have seen that, it's about the same amount of gore as that. It was a little bit more gory, I'd say, but and it, 
the reason I like this movie is because I love horror movies, and I was not expecting going into this being a horror movie, but coming out of it, I'm like, damn, that was kind of a horror movie, because there are some shots, there's one scene that sticks with me, I can't, like, I, I picture it every day in my head now, ever since I've seen it, but it was, man, one, once you see it, it's, it's really brutal, it's like, it's, he's, they're talking about people who got murdered, and they look up at the at the hut they're in or whatever it is the the viking building and just on the roof you guys know what i'm talking about if you see it it, it was that's an image that'll stick in my head forever that was brutal zero stars not one star for this movie people who said here this movie is accurate amazing or based on the life of vikings are doing drugs certainly well i guess she's not wrong there worst movie i've seen in my 30 years of life what the fuck this is why you, usually Google reviews are more accurate because the actual people, but you could tell these people are. I don't think I don't think they know what they're talking about because my friend said he liked the movie. I like the movie. Everyone else likes the movie that I've talked to. So these people are just like they must not. They don't know what a good movie is. The movie is extremely satanic and dark. There's only two fight scenes, and they were two fight scenes. There's literally a fucking fight scene the whole time. Man, this person's this person's dumb. Wow. Talia Rodriguez Corcho, I'm calling you out in my podcast. You fucking suck. I hope I hope you watch it again and realize that the movie is not bad. Pretty lackluster to say the least. Like nearly everyone was leaving a one star review. I'm a massive fan of Vikings and Norsemen. Yeah, I'm I wasn't even big on Vikings, but now I fucking think they're fucking sweet. This was just one long fever dream and left much to be desired. First of all, Nicole Kidman is just not suited to her role. She did a good job, so shut the fuck up. She is overused and in no way appears the part of a Viking queen. That's just too bad. She's fucking Nicole Kidman. She could do whatever the fuck she wants. They have so many good actresses. They could have utilized, utilized but went with her. They had Anya Taylor-Joy in this movie, who I think is incredible. She did a great job in this movie. She was she was honestly one of the best character in it, if I'm going to be honest. And the kid actors, man, the kid actors did really good. Like usually I fucking hate kids in movies, but this one he they were they were they were incredible. Just cuz growing up in that Viking time, you got to be gritty and strong. It's whew, it's tough to be a Viking. She is dull. And it was obvious what her motivation was from the beginning. Alexander Skarsgård was okay, but considering his brother plays Floki in Vikings, I couldn't figure out why he was just yelling and underacting. Dude, you do not want to listen to these reviews. 35 people found this helpful. I don't find this helpful at all. I find this demonizing, honestly. This is just huge disrespect. This... Okay, so the best thing I can compare this to is that back in 1982 or whatever year it came out when the thing came out that shit had so many bad reviews and now look at it <laughs> look at it now we're gonna look this movie in about 20 years and go back like damn that movie was intense and it was fucking awesome oh it's okay so this person calls themselves the person i was talking about before they I am a massive fan of Vikings and Norsemen. Um, so you're a fan of Vikings from the show Vikings? Is that how you like Vikings? That doesn't make any sense. That's where you're getting your, your culture from. So these people are talking bad on a movie. Uh, they're, they're talking bad on a movie from a TV show they've seen. Seriously? That's where you're getting your, your historical knowledge from? No. See, this is why you can't listen to these people. They're leaving one-star reviews because they they go off of the Vikings TV show and they're comparing that to this, which I've never seen. But I'm sure it's a good show. <clears throat> but this movie is, is incredible. Best part was making fun of it with my husband after it. So thanks for that bonding moment, I guess. Wow. When the lights came back on, the entire theater sat for a second, almost trying to comprehend what crap show we all just wasted 2.5 hours on. 
No, they were probably thinking about it, unlike you, because you're fucking uh, not, you're, I don't, there's too many words I probably get uh, canceled from by saying. Wow. It felt very empty and slow. There, there's not one, I did not think it was slow at all. It. The only part that maybe could have been a little slower was the beginning, and even then it wasn't even bad. You, you have to appreciate the cinematography and stuff and just all that Ethan Hawke he was in it for a little bit everything about this movie is a joke worst movie I've seen in years I'm so unhappy I wasted money on going to see this lame movie I've been on a viking kick for about three years seen many viking dude they're all talking about how they've seen viking shows seen many viking shows and movies Ooh. I know what I'm talking about. I know I know historical things that happened in the past because I saw shows on it. You're not making it accurate. Shut the fuck up. I do not see how this movie has such great ratings. It doesn't have great ratings because you people like you are giving it one star fucking reviews. Bitch ass. Motherfucker. Dude, these... Oh my god. Look, here's another one. If you want to watch something based on those times, I recommend watching Vikings that the History Channel did. The acting is better and has true and better storylines. Well, you got to remember also that um, this is a movie, um, and it's not based on a true story as well. So, if you guys don't remember that, you know it's it's a uh, it's a movie. Wow, I completely disagree with all these people. I really hated this movie. I love the Viking series, so I looked forward to seeing this movie. Wow. This was just... This is horrible. I want to look at the five-star reviews. <clears throat> ah, these make me feel a lot better. <laughs> wow, these are so much better. <laughs> yeah, it's basically the opposite of what they're saying. This movie is one of the greatest I've seen in a long time. The battles, the magic, the scenery, the story, etc. Everything in this movie is completely and utterly amazing. The only thing that would be said is that this is not a movie you'd want to watch with a small child or a grown-up baby that can't handle the movie. No, I, I do not. If you have children, do not bring them to the movie. It is brutal. This movie is amazing in every aspect. I am so glad I watched this movie. I don't think people can come up with any dislikeful moments. There is not one moment throughout the whole movie where one could say that they were bored or sleepy. Thanks for reading this review. Okay. You're welcome. Oh, here's more to that. P.S. These people leaving bad reviews are actually out of their minds. It's so funny that these haters have to come up with bad lies just to get some attention. You cannot judge this movie based on a review. It's something you have to watch and determine yourself. Although 9.99 times out of 10, I'm sure you'll like it. I agree with that. Beats 90% of the stuff that's being made today. Good throwback to old-fashioned gore and machismo. Machismo? Is that how you say I've never seen that word before. Oh, I call me a dumbass in the comments, probably. If you follow Viking heritage, it'll be even more enjoyable as you'll pick up a lot of Easter eggs on history and well-known stories and myths. I got goosebumps a few times during the movie, and my only complaint was the build-up before the vengeance. Felt was a little slow and unlike the main character. Great acting all around, you can really feel the character's emotions in a few of the scenes and leaves you wanting more. Highly recommend to those who are in a meta highly highly recommend those highly recommended to those, excuse me, who are into the meta metaphysical world. I definitely go again if someone asked me to go. Enjoy. Wow. Yeah. They I'm glad to see these reviews. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of good ones. There's a lot of bad ones. So you make up your mind, go see it, and you can have a choice of your own. But I cannot believe it has that many bad reviews. It has it has more bad than good. Look at that. It has a 7.8 on IMDb, 82% on Metacritic, and an 89% on Rotten Tomatoes. I'll agree with Rotten Tomatoes on this one. Although I'd probably give it like a 95 instead, not an 89. Uh, 89 is, is, is still a good score. It has a 66% audience score. So let me check Halloween from 2018. See, see what score that has. Because that's one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Let's see what it has. I know people like this movie. Oh my God. It has a higher audience score than The Northman. Oh my God. 
Don't even get me started on that movie. Oh my god. I had to take my glasses off and rub my eyes for that one. That is terrible. This movie, Halloween 2018... I'll spoil this one. I don't give a fuck. It's been out for four years now. Almost four years. Oh my god. This movie... Let me tell you. I was so excited for this movie. I Halloween is my favorite horror movie. Hold on. Excuse me. I gotta drink this water. My mouth is getting dry. Halloween from 1978 is my favorite horror movie of all time. Just the fact that they worked off a 300000 budget and did all that they did. And even though it was filmed in Pasadena, California, when I was a kid watching that, I still thought it was like Illinois. You know, I thought it was real. And But now that I know that, I've been watching for years, you know, I know that it's there's palm trees in the background and stuff, but everything else like there's still a little there's some flaws in it like every horror movie but man the the story that was told it, that hasn't been done before and they were the first to start it off i would i know texas chainsaw was before that and you know psycho was there too but this movie was different than those two this halloween was just on its own it was there's nothing on halloween that actually happened like that so I thought that was cool. And then there's Black Christmas, too. And there's probably more movies that I can't mention right now, but those are the top off my head right now. But, so, as you could tell, I've seen, I've seen all the Halloween movies. I've seen the, all the bad ones, all the good ones. There's, I think there's definitely... It, it's mixed for me. I, I like them. I like a lot of the sequels, even though they're bad. They kind of have a soft place in my heart because they're just... I, I grew up with them. I watched them... I think the first time I saw a Halloween movie was Halloween Resurrection, <laughs> but I was forced to watch it. I was like three years old when I saw it, so yeah. Uh, I don't remember the first time I saw the first one, but I remember watching Halloween 4 a lot as a child. Like I was like five years old, and I would play it all the time, so I've, I've seen these movies plenty of times, and I loved Halloween 4. I still love Halloween 4. That is my second favorite Halloween film in the original series um, that that mask is funny though but I've grown to like it because I just like it, it just has a Halloween vibe you know not like a ho like a Michael Myers Halloween like actual the holiday of Halloween like you could feel it in the air like it's like ooh, you get cold you know you wanna you, you just feel like there's somebody something evil because it's the Halloween spirit you know so as you can tell, I was pretty excited for Halloween 2018. When they announced it, I think it was one year before. I don't know if they announced it before that, but that promotional photo with Jamie Lee Curtis and Zac Efron that came out, I got so pumped for that. Uh, it was I was like, oh my god, dude. A new Halloween created by someone who actually likes the movie and it's going to be good. Oh, I was so excited. And Jamie Lee Curtis was coming back. I was like, fuck yeah, dude, this is going to be fucking awesome. And that whole whole 2018 year, me and my friend, because we're both big fans of Halloween, he's he's just as big as I am on it. And we were months before, like probably all the way from like 10 months probably before up until the time it released. And it started getting more and more exciting as the summer came on they're like we're getting close to it it's 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 fall finally and then october came and we went to go see it but before that we were looking up halloween we were watching all the halloween movies we were looking up halloween masks on ebay and stuff we would find these cool ass replicas of the original which we really want still but they're like a thousand dollars if you really want a good one but man, I need to get one one day. That that original mask is not beat. That that mask is one of the creepiest things you can ever lay your eyes on. It is just the epitome of evil. I fucking love it. Greatest greatest villain in history with that fucking mask. But uh, we, it was time. It was finally time for the movie. We get there. My friend is wearing a jumpsuit, a mechanic jumpsuit. <laughs> At the movies, I'm wearing my Halloween shirt. I'm pumped. The movie starts, and it was the the podcasters, as they call themselves, 
going to the insane asylum where Michael was at, where Michael re was residing at, and they pull out the mask, and they're all going crazy. And you're meeting the, this guy, the new Loomis, Doctor Sartain, which had a he had a good character development in the whole beginning of the movie. I was, I like this guy, but you I'll, you'll see later why I don't like him. Um, they pull out the mask, and all the insane people are going crazy. And Michael's not moving; he's not saying a word like usual. He's just standing there with his back turned, you know, head turned, like I don't give a fuck what you're showing me. And uh, it was the mask, and the the intro begins, and I was like, oh man, this movie's gonna be fucking awesome. And the the intro was great too, because it was that that pumpkin. It was. Uh, coming back up I think it was it was no what yeah it was inflating not deflating but after that moment after that intro there's until those podcasters died after that it became a shit shit fucking movie one of the worst movies ever fucking seen and you could tell it was written by comedy writers like Danny McBride like the with, with the script that there was there there was so much comedy and unwanted spots. Like everyone likes that little kid in the movie, when the that one blonde babysitter's getting killed. He's like, he was always like, you know, clip yo, clip yo fucking toenails. I know you're smoking weed. Yeah, that part was funny, and I I think that was a good spot. But I'm just saying he would say stuff like that. But there is, there is a, a time when the when Michael was in the house. And he was like, "Oh shit, I'm gonna get help or something." And he says that, and it's like you're putting you're putting comedy in the wrong times. This is supposed to be a suspenseful and horror moment, and you're making it funny. I don't want to see that. I want to see horror. There was not one one time in this movie that I was scared by anything. Only it was the only cool thing about the movie after that was the killing spree in in the city. That was the only good part. The rest of it fucking sucked. And maybe maybe the end end of it where Jamie Lee Curtis is fighting off with him and they put him in the basement and catch my fire. But as you can see by Halloween Kills, that didn't kill them. That didn't kill him. And there's gonna be another movie. He's not dead. He's coming back. My opinion on Halloween Kills though, honestly, that was more of a fan service to me than this one. Halloween twenty eighteen didn't even give me fan service, dude. It was I was just so disappointed by it. I I couldn't even look at it. I walked out of the theater and I was just telling my friend like, "Dude, that movie fucking was terrible." He liked it at first, but after I started telling him what I thought was wrong with it, he was like, he started slowly agreeing with me and the look on his face after I was telling him all these dull shit, he was like so sad. <laughs> I felt kind of bad, but I had to tell him how I felt. It was, it was, it was bad. This movie, Judy Greer, she did a terrible job. The guy who said peanut butter on my penis did a terrible job. Everyone did a bad job. The only person that probably did good was Jamie Lee Curtis, the guy who played Michael, and um, Allison, the, the daughter, the daughter of Judy Greer. Everyone else was fucking terrible. And the cop, the sheriff did good too. And then they killed him. Or, well, I guess he's not dead because he was alive in Halloween Kills. But it was, he was presumably dead. Him and then, man, Dr. Sartain. Bro, what the fuck was up with that storyline? Are you fucking kidding me? You're going to make him go make a make Michael seem like... A, you want to do a psychological experiment? Are you fucking kidding me? You could do that. But you have to pull it off right. You can't make... You can't make this guy go crazy like that and stab the sheriff. That no one was expecting that and no one wanted that, you know? It, there's some things that are good that aren't expected, but that was not something I wanted. You know, that kind of really like if I had any hope for the movie up until that point, it was totally lost after that. After that, I was like, man, I can't take this movie seriously. And I gave it a second try too. I gave the movie a second try a couple like a week later. And you know what? I was even worse. I was like, damn, I really did not like that. <laughs> I really didn't like that movie. Usually when I give movies second chances, I usually like them. But this time I was like, man, this, this movie fucking sucks. I can't watch that movie. If it's on, I'll, 
I'll watch it just to give it another chance because I'm in love with Halloween and I I really wanted to like the movie. I mean, it was it was my most hyped up movie ever. Like I've never been more hyped up for a movie in my life. I was hyped up for a fucking year to see that movie. And we I was researching every single day what was happening. I was looking behind the scenes with the shooting days, everything. I was behind all that. And I go into that and that they give us that shit. Get the fuck out of here. And then there's good reviews on it. Can you believe that? There's fucking good reviews on this movie. People are like, oh man, it's, it's so it's such a good, it gives it gives the franchise some new life. Yeah, some new life, and it's gonna fucking get killed pretty soon here. And not a lot of people liked Halloween Kills. Uh, I was reading the reviews, but I liked it just because it was so over the top with the gore and Michael was just brutal in this movie and it was the characters made terribly stupid decisions like in the first one but at least it was fun to watch Halloween 2018 was not fun to watch at all I had such a bad time and probably going into Halloween Kills I was not expecting good because I was so disappointed from the first one so I guess that's probably what made it better but that opening scene in Halloween Kills with the the flashback that was I give credit that that might have been one of my favorite scenes in the whole franchise. It was great. They did a great job with that. Oh, oh my god! I remember seeing that. I was like, "Holy fuck! This is awesome!" That was definitely some good fan service. That's the kind of fan service I was looking for. That wasn't in the first fucking movie. I'm glad they did that. So yeah, that's my that's my rant on Halloween, and I've always wanted to explain that to people. I could go probably go longer than that, but right off the top of my head, that's that's what I need to tell you guys about it. And I'm sorry if you guys like that movie and I might have ruined it for you. I don't like it. I'm sorry. I really hated it. And I'm a big fan of Halloween, like I've been saying. Like Halloween is my favorite movie, one of my favorite movie franchises, except for I hate Halloween 6 and Resurrection. I like Halloween 5 a little bit. It's not so much, but from 1, one to 4, I like... I even like Halloween 3. Give or take, you know, Michael Myers wasn't in it, but it's still, on its own, it's still a pretty solid movie. And then the Rob Zombie ones I still like. The Halloween 2 from Rob Zombie was a little little over the top with stupid shit and rednecks and hillbillies, but it, sorry if you're a redneck or a hillbilly, if I offended you. I used to be one, I think. No, I wasn't. I, I was just fishing for a short period of my life, and I called myself a redneck, and I was watching Duck Dynasty. I'm like, hell yeah, I was spitting tobacco kip. No, I wasn't doing that. I was 13 years old. But some people do that when they're 13 years old, not of trying to offend those kind of people. I can't say anything if I want to, don't want to offend anybody. Sorry. All right. So now that that's out of the way, I could talk. I can give you actually... A list of these movies that I was thinking about today that you guys should watch and if you haven't I mean if you haven't seen these movies already like there's something wrong with you because they're pretty popular all right number one my number one favorite movie of all time is Goodfellas nothing beats that it, it's so quotable everything I my Italian impersonation came from Robert De Niro from that movie Jimmy hey uh, what what are you what are you stupid or what huh I right, told you not to buy anything Whatever you got it from, put it back. I don't give a fuck. Hey, yo, uh, and then Joe Pesci's more higher pitch, like, what the fuck are you doing here, eh? Why, what is this, uh, what, you think I'm funny, eh? What, is this a joke to you, huh? Am I a clown? Do I amuse you? And then, and then, oh, that movie was brutal, too. That was a great movie. Uh, my favorite of all time. Uh, I can't choose what my second favorite movie of all time is, but for a while, this was my favorite. Uh, Blade Runner. Man, that movie the movie is great. So stylistic. The practical effects are insane. That's why it looks so real. When people use practical effects, it looks so much better than CGI. Now, I know it might cost more. It might, it might cause more problems, but if it, if, if it works out, dude, it looks real. But that movie, that movie's great. I love I love the story. Ridley Scott did a great job with that movie. Now my favorite comedy, oh man, this is tough, but my favorite comedy has to be Clerks. Dude, that movie is fucking hilarious. Oh my God. That or The Hangover. But both of those movies are fucking hilarious. But since Clerks was such a small budget and it was in black and white and the movie was basically all dialogue and just something going wrong for a guy the whole time, that movie was insanely funny 
and you're you, you just you just can relate to the people the story the people in the story it was, it was funny days confused that's a good movie just all around it's there's not really anything you're gonna laugh at there's not you're just gonna sit back in amazement at how such like you feel immersed into the 70s lifestyle these teenagers that movie is fucking great drive dude oh that movie is brutal too that that was actually the movie that got me into movies with the way the soundtrack dude the soundtrack was you felt it, it really blended well with what was going on when i first heard night call i was like damn that's a fucking amazing song that opening scene you heard it you're just like ooh, this movie's gonna be good and some people said it was slow which i can see why they would say that but you just have to be invested once you're invested in a movie you you'll be able to watch it and i've watched it probably i'd say around 50 times when i first got the movie when i first watched it i from the library i watched it probably about five times that weekend uh, i was just like so blown away by the movie and it's great it's a great movie now this next movie is the last one i'm going to recommend to you guys today i actually got i was intrigued by it because your movie sucks yms on youtube adam he he did a like a six or seven part series on this movie i didn't watch i didn't watch the review on it until after but i was really intrigued because he was talking about how great it was uh, this movie's called Synecdoche, New York. And man, this movie's a brain fuck. It hit stars uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. And you don't even know what's going on in the movie, honestly. It, it, it's hard to follow at first, but once you get to know the story and everything, what's going on, you're like, holy shit, wow. But that movie, whew, I recommend that movie. If you want to see a mind fuck, but prepare, you might get depressed. I don't know, it made me kind of depressed after watching it. But the way, just it, it's great. I recommend it though it's something you got to see it's hard to explain what the hell happens in the movie because it's like there's so much that goes on it's great and there's one more thing I want to recommend watching I the next episode comes out tomorrow or well if this come if I'm uploading this tomorrow it comes out today Sunday April or Sunday May 1st I think that's gonna be May 1st right or is there is it April 31st no there's no April 31st May 1st uh, the next episode of winning time comes out the story of the rise of the Lakers I know a lot of people probably don't like basketball who are on my channel uh, basketball is my favorite sport I love sports I love well, I don't love every sport but I love watching football and basketball this movie is just or this show is just perfect dude it is there's there's so much it's 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 exactly what I was looking for, and plus the NBA playoffs are on right now, so it makes it even better. But John C. Riley, he plays the the owner of the Lakers back in 1979 when they drafted Magic Johnson, and his story is just compelling. I had no idea this stuff went on. Now I know that a lot of it was fictionalized for the show, dramatized. Even uh, Jerry West, the guy who's the logo for the NBA, if you guys aren't familiar with basketball. He played for the Lakers, and they they made his character out to seem like he was some crazy ass goofball, like a, a mean crazy goofball, and he's nothing like that. And he's actually suing them for defamation, which is crazy. But I don't blame him though because they're doing they're doing him wrong. But they're ma it's making the show better, so I'm kind of on his side, but I'm kind of not because it's like his character is one of my favorite whenever he comes on the show i'm like oh man this scene's gonna be good you know what i'm saying so i understand his frustrations though if they made a show about me and they made me seem out to be like that which maybe i was during my life for a little bit of time there in high school but you know we can get past that moment uh, <laughs> um yeah i'd be pissed too so you know i feel bad for the guy he's getting old he's wow he's probably like 78 now or something let's see how old he is Jerry West. Let's see here. He is, oh, he's 83. Yeah, man, don't give this guy a heart attack. He's probably, you know, he's going to die with people thinking that this is how he was back in the day. Now, he may have acted a little bit like this. I'm not sure. I can't, I can't tell you. But 
man, they they are doing him pretty wrong. But his character is fucking awesome. Whoever's playing him, he's doing a great job. Look, he looks like him too. All these people look like the players when. All the people that are acting as um, basketball players, they you don't even realize how tall these people are until they're next to to smaller people, like normal sized people. Like when you look at Magic, you're like, okay, you know, he's, he's he looks like a normal sized guy, but then when you when you think about it, he's usually next to other people that are also as tall as him. So when he's next to people like me, who's is a normal you know five ten guy, he's he's a lot bigger. While lar- this is why I'm, I just pulled up something on it. While largely well, well received, a good chunk of the negative reaction to the first episode of Winning Time was centered around the depiction of Jerry West as an anger-filled, constantly, an oh, was centered around the depiction of Jerry West as an anger-filled, constantly raging figure, capped off by him chucking his finals MV, chuck, capped off by chucking his finals MVP trophy through his office window. Yeah, he, they were going insane, dude. The portrayal was the source of articles and tweets from multimedia, mul- multiple media platforms and was a topic in Anthony Irwin and Harrison Feigen's interview with Jeff Perlman on last week's Like, Okay, who cares about that? It was certainly a dramatization of West and perhaps a slightly unfair one, but the second episode of Winning Time takes a much more serious tone, both at the start of the hour and throughout, and with West taking center stage. Opening with the flashback to his childhood that featured his parents arguing in one room with the casket of his brother in another, viewers get a very real look at some real-life struggles Wes went through as a child. So that was true. He went through that. So, in an effort to hide, if not heal, a lifetime of scars, Wes threw himself into the job. Losses destroyed him. Wins also destroyed him. A sloppy moment. A poor coaching decision. A bad pass. When the team sealed the championship against Boston, Wes smiled for approximately 4.1 seconds. 4.1 4.1 seconds, then he thought about all the things that went wrong. Wow. So I guess episode two was a more real portrayal. But uh, I don't want to spoil any of the show. I didn't really give away anything. I'm just telling you how Jerry was acting in the mo- in the show. So I recommend it. It is a great TV show. It is great. Even if you don't like basketball, you're going to enjoy this. It's just it's so fun. And it is... It says TVMA, and boy, is it a fucking mature audience show. <laughs> oh my god. I know there's probably... I don't watch TV shows too often, so seeing, like, all these boobs, and there's, like, I hate... There's even a vagina... Like, you see a vagina in this show. I don't know if that happens in other TV shows, but it, it happens in this one for a little... A couple seconds. little fingering action. So... Yeah, if you don't want to watch that, definitely not around the kids. Same with that in the Northman. I I don't know which movie, which thing would be worse to watch with your kids. I think it would probably be uh, Winning Time because it is a very sexual, very sexual. There's boobs in every episode. I've counted. I've counted. <laughs> I've kept track of the boobs. I'm the boob tracker. All right. To to finish off this podcast today, after talking about movies for damn near fifty minutes. Wow, I I took longer than I thought it was uh, we're gonna get a little more fan questions here question statements whatever here is I'm not gonna do too many this time though so let's see this one tell us more oh this is from Corey Dallas multipass thank you Corey for the question Tell us more about your pets. Also, maybe not a topic for the podcast, but an idea in general. It would be cool to listen to your reaction or commentary to some of the trip stories as you read them. Yeah, I've been trying to do that, actually, so I'm going to plan on doing that soon. Actually, tomorrow you guys will see a video, or today, whatever. Sunday, I'm going to upload a video about this guy who has sex on Datura. So if you're watching this, this the sex on Datura video is going to be out. So go check that out if you haven't seen it. Uh, thank you for listening to this this far too. If you haven't closed out, I really appreciate it. So my pet Ozzy, he is a wonderful kitty cat. I wouldn't trade the world for him. He is he's five years old or he's four years old. He's turning five, and I got him at the shelter. And he I don't know how he got there. I they said that his owner was killed or or he died, so they brought him in. But I'm not sure if I really buy that because. Ozzy actually has this thing on his eye 
where it looks like he got abused and every time i go to pet him it's not every time but a lot of the times he like flinches and he you feel it seems like i'm gonna hit him which I, it's like it makes me want to tear up every time that happens because i you know i love him so much i would never do anything like that to hurt him or anything uh so seeing that just makes me so sad but i'm glad he's in a happy home with someone who cares about him and he gets to eat wet food and shrimp and ham all the time so you know he's living the life now he may have suffered for the first couple for the first year i think i got him when he was a year and a half old or two years old. no he was two years old yeah he was two years old so he's in a happy home now got him september 2019 or august one of those months and yeah, he's he's doing a good job. He's he's a good kitty. Every time he goes to the vet, he's always there's like one thing that I had to pay extra for to get his blood work for, but it was just a scare. So I wish they give me my money back since it was a waste of money. But whatever, they're keeping my cat healthy, so I guess I can't complain. But there's nothing wrong with him. So yes, he's he's a good kitty. I I recommend getting a cat. I know a lot of people like dogs. I like dogs too, but. I think cats are honestly they're more what's the word they're they're more like open I'd say dogs are kind of wild I don't think I can leave a dog at home for how long I go to work like I need and I wouldn't want to put them in a cage either because I why to put an animal in a cage is like man imagine you're being put in a cage for fucking eight hours or nine hours of the day however long you're working that that's not right like even being in a house is small enough, you know. So if you're putting an animal in a cage, you I don't. It, it's okay if they're like sleeping when they're sleeping and everything, but like if you're leaving them in there when you're going to work or something, that's just totally that's that's abuse to me. If I'm being honest, like seriously, you gotta stop doing that if you're doing that. I'm sorry if people who are doing that are listening to me right now, but if if it's if you're doing that, just maybe think about it because think about if you were in their shoes and they're and you were and you were being stuck in a cage for that long like that's i and i know that they might tear the house or something or poop everywhere or piss whatever but that's why you got a dog you you know that's gonna happen no matter what so if you didn't want that to happen you shouldn't have gotten a dog that's that's just the facts and that's why I like cats because cats, I mean, yeah, I'll come home to shit on the floor, a hairball, whatever, but mostly they're pretty fine. Like it's probably once a month I come home to a shit on the floor and that's that's not as much as usually dogs do. So and I don't got to take them outside to go take a shit or anything. They they do that right in the litter box over here. So yeah, that's so that's nice. I I, I don't like litter boxes, but I'd rather do that than pick it up outside. I have, I hate everything to do with shit. So, um, yeah, that's my that's my opinion on dogs and cats. I love dogs, but you know I wouldn't want to have one just because I wouldn't be able to care for it as much as I can. With cats, they they sleep most of the day. You know, lions they're related to lions who sleep twenty hours per day, and Ozzy he sleeps about that much. So. <laughs> when when he gets away he actually uh he just killed a mouse uh this morning he's been chasing it for about two months now actually on the last podcast i had to stop it because i heard the mouse outside and then it ran back under the couch and i think it ran back in the kitchen under the stove or whatever but he was waiting for it the whole week he was looking under the oven the stove whatever and he finally got him yesterday and i saw the mouse hiding I was trying to grab him because I don't want him to kill him. I want, you know, I don't like any animal dying, you know, except ants. I fucking hate ants. I'd kill them. Uh, give me all of them. I'll fucking kill them. Step on them. Spray them. I don't give a fuck. I fucking hate ants. Uh, but this mouse, it's, you know, the mouse is kind of cute. My mom doesn't like mice. And, you know, rats are kind of, you know, they're kind of, they're big. So that's what makes me not like them. But mice are so small, you know, they're, they're kind of cute. I don't mind seeing them. I was trying to pick them up and throw them outside, but he wouldn't let me pick them up. And I'm like, well, you know, my cat might get you now. And what do you know? The, the cat was, the, the, the mouse was dead when I woke up the next, this morning and he was by Ozzy's food bowl and I picked him up, threw him outside, and uh, that's that. I thought he might have been like he might have been shocked or something from being scared so much. But uh, man, Ozzy must have like bit into him or something. 
I'm just glad he didn't eat him. I, I didn't want him to eat him because I don't know what kind of diseases that can take on. But he killed him and, uh, yeah, threw him outside of my front yard and a bird will probably eat him or whatever. Maybe the neighborhood cat out here, his name is Moose. He strolls up to our house every now and then. And he's, he's a fucking badass. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a funny cat. I like Moose. Maybe he'll eat him or something. I don't know. All right, I'm probably not going to do that many more questions, probably like one or two more, and then I'll end it. Uh, this has been a pretty good podcast so far, I'd say. You could, uh, This is from Colton Rourke. That's a cool name. You could talk about the possibility of YouTube being a viable career option. How much success would be necessary in order to do it full time, with or without being to personal on a financial, with or without being, oh, too personal, okay too personal on a financial standpoint um it's definitely viable you just have to i don't think i'm in the right area of youtube where it can be since it's with drugs and you can get youtube can literally demonetize you any second they just did it to trip reports a couple weeks ago um that's why i'm glad i just had my full-time job if it ever gets demonetized i'm like well at least i got my full-time job with me but man, this is seriously making YouTube videos. I It has really helped me out with not working as much as work. I got off the list and sometimes I get forced over time, but it really doesn't happen as much as it used to. So I'm working eight hours, eight hour days, eight and a half, nine hour days now. And I come home and I play guitar and stuff, but on my days off, I'm immediately working on my YouTube and uh, I don't really wanna, I don't know if I should disclose how much I make a month, but it definitely makes up for the overtime I'm missing and I makes up and it gives me more. So I I do think it can work if definitely if you if you probably got like a hundred thousand subscribers or something, you can probably make it a full time career. But even if that happens to me, I'm still not gonna do it because I you never know with YouTube, you know, they can like I said, they can demonetize you any single moment, so just the just the unknown kind of worries me if I were ever to quit, which I would never will, unless unless I become PewDiePie famous. Of course, I'd quit after that. But anything like anything probably less than a million, I would not quit. So yeah, but it, it is possible though. <clears throat> All right, I kind of answered these questions last week. No, this one's a good one. This one's by EJ. Do you believe you have already made your biggest impact on humanity? If so, what? Or do you think it has yet to come? No, I don't think I have made my biggest impact on humanity. I think I still have a lot to offer. I really want to become a guitarist. I've been playing guitar for a year and a couple months now. I really want to change the world and make make music. I think music can solve a lot of issues in this world if, you, if, you, if I'm really being honest about it. Uh, I want because they inspired me you know Jimmy Page Tony Iommi Tony McPhee all these guitarists uh, they they inspired me to continue playing and I hope to pay, carry on their tradition you know Robert Johnson all the blues singers uh, guitarist Hubert Sumlin he's really good uh, yeah Rory Rory Gallagher dude he is amazing if you haven't listened to him him and Alvin Lee those are two underrated guitars that I really love 10 years after and taste and his solo work Rory Gallagher uh, Alvin Lee is with 10 years after and Rory Gallagher he was he made taste and you know his solo work those are two man I don't know how they didn't get more spotlight because their guitar work is better than a lot most of the other people who play guitar Jimi Hendrix of course I mean come on like I think everyone is that's like the one person everyone has that number who who has that number one and you can't even disagree with it in anything like anything with sports or I don't know if they do that with art with artists like who say who's the best artist of all time but whenever you think a guitarist the first thing you Per, the first person you think of at number one, you're gonna say Jimi Hendrix, and if someone says that, you'll be like, "All right, I could see that." Even though if you might have something else, like you're not gonna be mad about it, you know. So I think Jimi Hendrix is the consensus consensus number one. I 
he's not my favorite guitarist. He's in my top 10 for sure. I think he definitely, he changed the game. He impacted it so other people could come in. He's personally not my favorite since I, I just, I, I love so many, you know, I can't, but he is definitely one of my favorites. He's not my favorite, but he's one of them. So no disrespect to the people who love Jimi Hendrix. He's definitely in my top 10, maybe even top five, but he's, there, you know, I, Jimmy Page, I think, is my my favorite. I think is the best, honestly. But that's just my opinion. So don't don't get mad at me in the comments. But Jimmy Hendrix is probably around, you know, five to seven, I'd say. But that's just because I his music, I like his songs, but I don't like him as much as I do other songs. And that has, and but. At least he had his guitar work though. That that made the songs a lot better. But Led Zeppelin music, man, that's just I nothing beats that for me. They're my favorite band. So yeah, I hope to make a big impact on humanity like that. And I think I'm already making a big impact in the YouTube community, even though it's only twenty two thousand subscribers. Man, it, it's only growing. So hopefully that gets bigger and we can go on from there. And with that, we'll end the thought loop episode two i really hope you enjoyed listening i'll be back here next week again to talk about some other stuff i'm glad i actually had a topic to talk about instead of rambling on which i still did in this episode but at least i had a thing to revolve around so thank you so much and we'll see you next week